Good morning, everyone. My name is Anika Srinivasan, and I'm project lead of Mental Health Foundation. Good morning, everyone. My name is Anika Srinivasan, and I'm project lead of Mental Health Foundation Australia. We begin today by, um, by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the various lands on which we meet, and I pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging. And I extend this respect to any Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander peoples here in attendance today. On behalf of Mental Health Foundation Australia, I would like to welcome and thank each and every one of you for attending the third event of National Mental Health Month, Virtual Sound Meditation. National Mental Health Month is an initiative of the Mental Health Foundation Australia to advocate for and raise awareness of Australian mental health as a community. The amateur phase National Mental Health Month is unlike many other mental health awareness campaigns. It aims to bring all Australians together in a nationwide conversation about mental health, and we aim to maintain this conversation for an entire month and beyond through a series of various mental health related events. So National Mental Health Month is a program that the amateur phase is extremely proud of, and we intend to reach out to and educate as many Australians as possible to help reduce stigma and facilitate positive and non-judgmental discussion surrounding the important topic of mental health in Australia. With one in five Australians experiencing mental health illness, it is time we give mental health its due attention. And that is exactly what the MHFA is wanting to achieve. Throughout this month, many events like this have been organized in each state and territory of Australia, aiming to attract and unite Australians of all ages and backgrounds to raise awareness of the need for better mental health. This year's theme of National Mental Health Month is post-pandemic recovery challenges and resilience. This year's theme will focus on raising awareness about mental health in various industries and communities. Every individual has faced and many are still facing unprecedented challenges due to the COVID-19 pandemic. With this theme in mind, we aim to extend our campaign even wider than previous years with events planned to embrace many different community groups and people of all ages walking on the road to recovery and resilience. Please join us in celebrating the Mental Health Foundation Australia by viewing a short video. Hi everyone, I'm Vasan Srinivasan, Chairperson of the Mental Health Foundation Australia. It's a privilege to lead this wonderful community-based mental health organisation in its 91st year of establishment. The MHFA has grown strength to strength over the past few years. With Victorian Mental Health Month in 2018, the National Mental Health Month occurring in 2019, 2020, and this year in 2021. Last year, COVID-19 did not stop us from achieving our National Mental Health Month campaign. I'm proud to say, we successfully shifted many events to a virtual platform, very much being able to pursue our objectives of raising awareness and advocating for better Australian mental health. Our primary aim is to reach out to and educate as many Australians as possible to help reduce stigma and to encourage constructive and non-judgmental dialogue on Australia's critical mental health issue. The highlight of last year's campaign was reaching out to 100,000 Australians all across the country for our national works for mental health, both virtually through our MHFA app and physically in some states. What a grand success that was. In 2021, with pandemic still affecting many of us, we decided not to give up once again, curating a carefully chosen blend of virtual and physical events for Australians to participate in. This year, we have a new and improved MHFA app, giving people the opportunity to participate in National Mental Health Month from the palms of their hands. This year, theme is mental health and post-pandemic recovery challenges and resilience. Mental Health Foundation Australia is proud to partner with Australian technology business, DB Results, and take up the wellbeing app, Am I OK? to support our members, enabling individuals to regularly check in on a private and secure platform and ask the question, Am I OK? Am I OK also alerts the user when it's time to seek outside help. We thank DB Results for this opportunity to promote wellbeing and early intervention. This year, we have launched a special initiative, the Mental Health Appeal on the 10th of October, our World Mental Health Day. Through this, 
We aim to raise funds for the development of a course promoting life and safety in young people. At the MHFA, we pride ourselves in making sure all our programs are for the community and powered by the community. We have a vast growing network of multicultural ambassadors, youth ambassadors and future leaders who further the community voice in promoting mental health and well-being. Our multicultural network has inspired our educational and multicultural webinars as an initiative to assist individuals cope with success during the pandemic. I would like to take this moment to thank our board directors and patrons, scientific advisory committee members, our wonderful staff, multicultural and youth ambassadors, future leaders, MHFA members and major sponsors for their continuous support to our organization. As we continue to work to deepen understanding of the importance of mental well-being and educating the community. Let's work in solidarity for the benefit of our mental health. Thank you, Australia. I would now like to invite our presenter for today, Vaishali Budigay. Vaishali Budigay is the founder of Divinity Project, and as a sound alchemist, she uses the power of sacred sounds like gongs, Tibetan singing bowls and voice to transport her clients from a state of stress to a place of peace and calm. Vaishali is a qualified physiotherapist with over two decades of workplace health and well-being experience and is a passionate advocate for the prevention and early intervention for holistic health and well-being. Vaishali is also a qualified yoga teacher and sound, he sound healing practitioner and has intensely studied mind and body energy medicine over the past decade in her quest for complementary treatment options after her late husband was diagnosed with major depression in 2009. Vaishali specializes in online group sound meditation for the general public, workplaces and group transformation journeys. Organizations engage her as a part of the health and well-being initiatives such as virtual conferences, team meetings and well-being days. Vaishali has also successfully conducted a number of group transformation journeys with women. Without further ado, I will pass on to Vaishali to run you all through today's session. Morning, everyone. Thanks, Anika. Um, so if you want to find the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, vibration and frequency. So today I will give you all a brief overview of what sounding, sound healing is, um, followed by a 30 to 40 minute sound immersion uh, meditation, and then we'll have a Q&A at the end. So please ensure that you're sitting somewhere really, really comfortable. So not like a kitchen chair, but ideally in a place like a couch or even lying down. Grab some, um, you know, a blanket if, the, if it's nearby or a pillow. Make sure you've got um, headphones on as well. Uh, it will just lead to a much more deeper and profound experience. Um, please make sure that obviously your phone's on silent and there's no sort of notifications that are going to interrupt you during the um, meditation because it's quite important that you're able to really, you know, surrender and just totally sort of immerse yourself in the experience. So has anyone here heard dance music and wanted to start dancing? So you can just do it by the reactions or you can pop your hand up that you've heard dance music yep and you're like yep you want to start boogieing um, and has anyone used sound or music to help themselves feel calm or anything like that yeah awesome cool now so I'm sure you've heard it in all different forms, whether that's, you know, Eastern or Western classical, you know, you might be into rock, pop, jazz, you know, so there's a lot of different types of music out there. Um, so I know that definitely when I, you know, um, go running, sometimes I like to put on dance music so that, you know, you get more sort of motivated to run a bit faster. Um, and I trust that um, many of you have experienced this when a certain song comes onto the radio, it takes you down that memory lane. Has anyone experienced this? Or you have a surge of emotions or memories arise of a person or a place. And so, you know, it's quite a powerful, powerful um, tool and modality, I guess, um, that can, you know, help serve us. So, um, so we can all, I guess, agree that sound and music can have a profound impact on our physiology 
and psychology and our mood. And we can use sound in a specific way to allow us to, um, you know, have those desired effects. So we also use sound um, to relax and soothe ourselves. For example, um, and you might not realize that, but it is a form of sound healing where you go, <sighs> has anyone done that when it's just been a long day or anything like that? Yeah, anyone here? Yeah. And that's a form of sound healing, right? Because you're just releasing and you're using sound to sort of allow that expression. And has anyone here stubbed their toe and gone, ow? <laughs> Anyone done that? Yeah. So again, you know, it's a way that we use sound to, you know, soothe ourselves and to heal ourselves. So um, without realizing it. So what are the, some of the things that we could potentially achieve if we used sound consciously, you know, to really restore our health and vitality? You know, what would that look like? So sound therapy has actually been around for thousands of years as part of healings and as part of rituals and ceremonies. So you can think about the Native Americans, you know, with their flutes, you know, shamanic drums and song. You've got your Tibetans with their, you know, gong, singing bowls, chanting. Um, and then in the Indian tradition, again, you have a lot of chanting of mantras, your wind and string instruments. So, you know, it's been around for thousands and thousands of years, some form of, you know, song along with, um, you know, um, instruments, including the indigenous with their didgeridoos and clapsticks and the like. Now, a common phrase of the Hindu tradition is Nada Brahma or the universe is sound. Nada Brahma means not only God the creator is sound, but also and above all creation, the cosmos, the world is sound and the sound is the world. Sound healing in a therapeutic application of sounds is used in a specific manner that can lead to profound release on a mental emotional and physical level it can lead to deep healing rest and perhaps even give you insights to simplify um, today's session how i like to run it is um, it'll be phased in three there'll be three distinct phases there'll be the relax release and renew so in the relaxation phase you'll be um, led to a place of deep sort of relaxation and stillness and what happens is, and I'll be playing certain sounds to help trigger the relaxation response. And this allows for release to occur. And then in the next phase, that, you know, renewal um, and to be able to restore all our cells back into their rightful state of health and harmony. So you'll notice that there's, you know, certain sounds where you're like, you start really sort of sinking in and you'll be feeling really relaxed. And then suddenly you're like, oh my goodness, what's she playing there? And it's, um, there'll be certain sounds I'll be playing to really help release some of the things that might be stuck, you know, perhaps at the physical level, emotional or mental levels. And so I invite you to just sort of, you know, allow whatever arises to accept it and then to just release it. Um, and then at the end, it'll all bring it back into this beautiful state of harmony with certain sounds that I'll be playing to just align our mind, body and spirit and also bring all our cells back into that state of health and harmony. So there's just two main contraindications for sound healing. It is a very gentle and powerful um, technique, but it's just good to be aware. So people with sound epilepsy or with very severe, unstable mental conditions may get triggered, um, you know, inappropriately. And so just be mindful that, you know, if you're sort of feeling a little bit too triggered or anything like that, I won't be uh, offended if you feel like you need to leave. But like I said, it will be quite a gentle um, meditation. But I just need to let everyone know that they are some of the contraindications. Now, the other thing to be really aware of is that there will be moments of silence, just a brief moments during and at the end. And this is to allow for that sound and the vibrations to, you know, really sort of sink down into that, into your neurological um, system and into the cells. So please don't suddenly, you know, sit up and go, where's Vishali gone? Um, or is my internet connection dropped out or anything like that? I will bring you all back um, safely. So just use those moments of silence. I invite you to just drop further into yourself 
um, to really let go. Yeah. And, oh, if everyone can just mute themselves, that would be awesome. Thank you. Um, so what we'll do is please make sure that, as I said, for any latecomers that you've got a pair of headphones, it'll really, really help to enhance the experience. And what I'll do is I'll just play the bowls a few times before we start so that you can adjust the volume at your end. You may wish to lie down. So we're going to just take a few cleansing breaths to allow all tensions and worries to wash away. So you're going to just breathe in through the nose. <sighs> breathe out through the mouth. And with each out breath, I invite you to just let go of all worries and tensions. the shoulders drop away from the neck your jaw relax now we'll just take a few couple of breaths where you're going to breathe in through the nose and blow out a candle of you or if you feel safe to do so closing your eyes finding a balanced position of the body sound of the bowl to take you deeper 
longer serves you to exit out into the universe to be transmuted and it also allows all of the healing vibrations and sounds to enter through the shield into every single cell of your body bringing it into balance and harmony
resting in silence for the next one minute. Gently beginning to wriggle your fingers and toes. <sighs> Taking a breath in. Feeling your body on the surface beneath you. Making circles with your wrists and ankles. In your mind's eye, visualising some of the things in the room. Feeling the clothes against the skin, bringing awareness back to your sense of smell and taste as you come fully back into the body. <sighs> Take another breath in, coming back, rubbing your palms together, waking the body up, massaging all the organs, warming the hands. And just cupping them over your eyes. And making slits with your fingers. Allowing light to stream in. And with a big smile on your face, stretching up towards the skies. And any which way that your body's asking... So as you arrive back, make sure that you drink lots of water. This just allows the healing vibrations to integrate further into your cells. And it also allows to flush out, you know, anything that's been released to let go of that from the system. And if you've got a pen and paper handy, you may wish to journal anything that arose for you. And I invite you to use some of the techniques that I went through in a conscious manner to help you reset and come back into the present moment so the um, ah, uh, you can do that perhaps in the shower first thing in the morning to set, you know, like a meditation, I guess, in the shower. And then the humming, mm, it's quite good for insomnia. You could use that perhaps at the end of the day or just to clear your mind during the day. And I trust that you're all feeling quite relaxed calm and at peace 
and try to keep this sense of this particular sense of awareness to all your interactions and your activities to coming back into that heart center that place that's grounded centered and at peace thank you all so much for attending today I'm happy to stay back um, for any questions or feedback or if you wanted to share anything that's, you know, arisen for you. Oh, the two contraindications were basically sound epilepsy and um, severe unstable mental health conditions. That it might trigger, you know, um, those sort of conditions. All right. Thank you so much, Vaishali, for conducting nice. today's session. I certainly feel so much calmer now, and I trust that everyone else does as well. Um, just before we finish, and you're welcome to leave, um, you know, if you, if you would like, but we just have one final video to play, and then um, we'll be done for today. Over 400 young people lose their lives to suicide each year. This number is 400 too many. This year, the MHFA is launching the Mental Health Appeal on the 10th of October, raising funds to develop an evidence-based training program primarily aimed at promoting life and safety in young people. Join us this October in the fight against suicide. Your dollars and cents will help us prevent. Visit our website for more information on how you can support this cause. We're counting on you, Australia. Australia, are you ready for a challenge and that too for a good cause? Then look no further. Join the MHFA as we walk for mental health across the country on the 17th of October at 10.30am in each state and territory capital. Worried about COVID? Well, we've got you covered. We have launched our MHFA app where you can walk virtually raising funds as an individual or in a team. Visit our website for more information about getting started. So come on Australia, our journey to better mental health starts with one step. Thank you everyone for being here today and we really hope you enjoyed participating. Um, if you'd like to tune in to any other events throughout the month, then feel free to visit our website www.mhfa.org.au to register. Thank you and enjoy the rest of your day. I just have some um, requests to send the links in the chat. I will send through an email to everyone who's registered afterwards if that helps. Thank you, everyone. Take care. Bye.